Okay, welcome back to this latest episode in our language. And today we have some key questions. I'd like to possibly finish up the proto phonology um, and then we can start working on sound changes in the next video. The biggest questions I had were where do th and z come from? And so I went to the index that I chronic that and I looked for sound changes. Turns out really rare sounds and not very <laughs> normal sounds to um, to have. And they um, there's only a few ways that they show up. Generally, tl comes from an existing tl, apparently. It's really hard to just get that sound. Um, but I did find an RL, a voiceless R and an L, cl, cl, becoming cl in early Icelandic. And my thought is that that we can reduce cl into just cl probably pretty easily. <clears throat> that seems not too difficult. Um, l, even rarer, apparently. And the only thing that seemed to make any sense was this ra 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 coming z, becoming z, uh, and that happened in ubi. And so I think it's interesting, though. I like that it's coming from R coloring because our R coloring is very. Um, I mean, it's just it's something that we're using a lot. So. I, I think it's nice to have that be where these sort of strange vowels are going. It does, however, the, apart, the approximate rhotic is not something that produces it. Is. It's really it's the trilled one. And so I'm wondering, do I need to switch to the proto-language having a at least a tact R? And that... I think is going to be a question. I'm trying to think, is there anywhere else uh, retroflexes are going from R coloring coronal? So I'm wondering, does, does tra, 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 ka, 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 can I see tra becoming ka? I think so. I don't think there's any problem with that. Tra, 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 ka, tra, 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 ka. As opposed to, you know, tr, tr, which obviously pulls the, the T back a little bit. Tr, 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 tr. I can see that happening. I'm okay with that. Um, da, 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 that's unaffected, that's unaffected, that's unaffected. And then just having the R disappear along with most of the uvular pharyngeal stuff, vowel coloring. I think we can do that. So I think actually what I can do is insert of, we'll call these half consonants and I don't remember which ones are allowed and not allowed so I'm just going to not care about that right now and we're going to shade that we're going to get rid of that so we won't have a r sound in the proto lang we'll have a k and I need to actually make that uh, and not r. So r. Okay, so that'll be good. Good notes to make here will be that. And what I'm going to end up doing, I think, is um, I won't do this exact change because I don't have a voiceless rhotic. So I'm just going to do l becoming pull becoming. Pl, and then somehow I'll get pl out of that. That'll be something that probably happens. And then rie, rie, I will get that from R I plus A vowel, which means in, obviously I'm gonna have to have a front high vowel. Um, but that was never a question. That was that was going to be a thing we had. And that was where pl will come from. And then this, I can actually, huh, but it will disappear. Um, most of the usual pharyngeal stuff 
I'm thinking uh, 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 doesn't really seem to be a vowel coloring thing. Not in the same way that R is. Like R, 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 R. I can see it doing some vowel coloring, but I'm going to put a big old question mark behind that. And possibly merge with O. So, R and L might be sort of like um, what's happened in Japanese, where they have sort of a... their approximate is actually somewhere between L and L. Um, so that gives us that. And is that all of the consonant questions? Let me just make sure I haven't overlooked anything really, really important. Um, so we're starting with these, and we're going to <clears throat> lose them. I'm going to mark those as red. We might not fully lose them, but they're something that's going to get messed with a lot. Actually, those are Whereas these green ones are ones that we are gaining. And they're not proto sounds, <clears throat> but we are gaining them. I'm okay with having those in the proto language. Sometimes I'll just have ooh and e vowels and then we'll do diphthongy things that happen. But I'm okay with starting with them. You know, our proto-language isn't the beginning of all language in this area, it's just at some point there was a thing that did that stuff, and now we're looking for it. Um, so and Z. Do I want to have both of those in the proto-language? Or do I want to derive Z from intervocalic Z? I think that we can just have them in the proto-language. They're both, um, both horrible. I don't remember the exact term for fricatives that happen right here that tend to be really strong. I don't remember if that's sibilant. Ooh, there's an update for Illustrator. Good for you. I'm kind of recording a video. I don't know if I needed that right now. Um, perfect. I think that's good. I think we're there. I think the only thing left is vowels. And can I whip vowels out in just a couple minutes? Yeah, I can whip vowels out in just a couple minutes. No problem. Vowels pretty easy. I'm going to do your standard um, stuff. So this is going to be front, back, high, mid, low. I know that's not all the categories, but I don't care because I'm not using all the categories. Our proto language is going to have fairly simple vowels. I'm going to uh, and now the decision comes. I usually, in a proto language, either start with a five vowel system or a three vowel system. And I don't know which one I want right now. I had also wondered about doing a six vowel system with phonemic schwa. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Actually, I usually do that. I would do that. If I were doing a five vowel system, there would five vowels. I like the idea of having five vowels in our proto language because then our vowels can get a little bit more complicated as time goes forward. Um, just not sure if I want to do something with a vowel up here. If we did a vowel up here, what would end up happening, I think, is interesting stuff with the retroflex. Remembering our retroflexes sometimes happened when E shifted to E and dragged the concept back with it. Would it be possible to derive retroflexes to different ways in the language? So that some retroflexes are just happening because they were R colored, and some are happening because we vowel shift. I kind of like that. What it would mean is if I did, if I like split that, and Uh, 
and this one is um, that vowel. That would be interesting. And of course, this is green. There's going to be some sort of pushing back. I'll have to do a vowel change to get E to push back to it. Um, so I'm not going to finish vowels in this video. But my question can become this. Now oh, that's an alarm. Um, questions can become this. Um, I go into if question mark. What else happens? Um, Diphons question mark, but that might be more of a sound change question later. Are there diphthongs in the proto-language? I don't think I'm going to do that, because I don't think I'm very good at that yet. Oh, I probably shouldn't worry about that. Um, I'll leave it there. So we figured out our consonants, <clears throat> I think, pretty well. I know what we're going to be doing, I know where we're coming from, I know where we're going, basically, with those. I'm going to sit on vowels for a little bit and think about it. So, yeah, five vowels becomes, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, that being said, um, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully the consonant discussion has been interesting and the vowel discussion will continue to be so. All right, Icarus out.